Welcome back to the channel guys and today's video is going to be on how to get the better youth intakes and I'm going to show you guys how to get from this to this. Let's get into it. First thing to note in the video is even if we do have all these things that I'm about to tell you, this is not a guarantee to get a golden generation. All we're doing here is trying to give you the best possible chances and increase the percentage chance that you guys will get better players on a more consistent basis. So this save we're on right now is my Football Manager 23 stream save from Twitch. My link is down below. And it has the editor enabled, or it did, on FM23. Now, everything was done on stream, so there was absolutely zero altering anything. Um, but I have used the in-game editor to change some names because people in my chat have been renaming players based on the points that they get from watching my stream. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before people in the comments are like, oh, you've done this, 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 and this. And that's absolutely fine if you believe that. Not a problem. Just don't have to watch the video. But if you guys um, just stick with me, I'm going to explain how I got all these players because all these guys are Andorran. Every single one of them are Andorran. It's a club and country save. So we manage the club team, obviously, the plays in the Spanish pyramid owned by Gerard Pique, but then we also managed the national team, and we ended up getting to the World Cup third round, which is obviously in the future with the new knockout system in the World Cup, and we lost to Uruguay. Uh, it was a tough pill to swallow, but all these players came from our academy at the club, and I'm going to sh I'm showing you this at the start of the video because I want you guys to sh see that I know what I'm talking about. Basically, um, this guy is a real player. We signed him, but if I go through all my players really quick, come from my academy. If you'll see that every single one came through my academy, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, okay, that's enough. <laughs> so, I just want to show you as well, I never managed to win the Liga, but we came second multiple times. So, all, like, you see, the, the bad season there in fourth, but we came second, we've been in the Champions League quarterfinals, we've come to the Champions League semifinals. I wanted to start the video with that part, just so you guys are like, oh, okay, this guy might actually know what he's talking about, compared to just saying things with no proof or no backup or no experience so the first thing i want to discuss is if you're a top team and you get your youth intakes through if they aren't five stars that's absolutely fine a five star player coming through at man city is very very rare it's basically Lionel messi which is once in a lifetime almost it doesn't if it's a four star player coming through at man city psg or real madrid that is absolutely fine because you'll find that like kevin de bruyne or players like bernardo silva they are four star players in your team De Bruyne might be four and a half, but Bernardo Silva's a better example. He's just slightly below him. Bernardo Silva type player at four stars coming through your academy is still very good. Just because he doesn't say elite talent and he's got that shiny five star potential next to him, that is the downside to managing a top team. Five star players will be less. There'll be a lot less. You might get one in a save and you've got a world in, you've done well. But a four star players can be developed and turn into really, really good Champions League level players. So don't neglect players just because they're not five stars. Also, that four star player could eventually turn into a four and a half star player or even a five star player, depending on how good your coaches are. Because as he spends more time at your club, your youth coaches and your coaches will find out more about him and they might reevaluate his potential. So that four star guy that came in and you're slightly underwhelmed with, he might end up being four and a half star and he might turn into a De Bruyne rather than a Bernardo Silva. I know there's a Slight difference there in those two, but there is a difference. So just remember that player stars are relevant to the club that you are at. A five-star player at Notts County in League Two doesn't mean he can then come and go and play for Bayern Munich. That's not the case. It just means he's a five-star player for Notts County. And as you progress up the divisions to the championship, you might only be two and a half stars then. You might not. You might have got really lucky, but as you go up, you'll probably more than likely see that a guy will go down the star rating. So just because you get six five-star players through an intake at Notts County and three four-star players at Man City, those four-star players at Man City are a lot better than the five-star players at Notts County, just so you guys are aware of that. So now let's talk about the things that you guys can directly impact in your save games. So there's three things on this screen. Obviously, we have maxed out the training facilities because we're in 2034. But youth facilities, youth facilities of ours are state of the art, which is the best you can get. It's 20 out of 20, perfect, fantastic. But youth facilities affects the players that you can't see in the game yet. So the players under the hood in the academy teams, just for example, you're under 10s, you're under 13s, and everyone that is in your academy before they come into the game as a 16-year-old in your youth intakes. So the higher that is, the better chance of those players are getting better facilities and they're going to be better once they come into the under-16s. So that means your training facilities are all the players that are in the game already. So your 16-year-olds to your first-team players. Training facilities 
directly impacts those guys in terms of development. But your youth facilities are the guys you can't see yet coming through underneath the hood. The next one you guys can influence is your junior coaching. So think of those guys as under the hood coaches that coach in the youth facilities that are also under the hood, right? So youth facilities and junior coaching are together that basically create the current ability and the potential ability of the players in your academy before they reach your squad in the under 18s. The last one is youth recruitment and think of that like a net around your club. So the smaller the rating of your youth recruitment, the smaller the net, the bigger, the wider the net, the bigger you can cast it, the more players you can pull in to your net. And that is the basically the way the youth recruitment works. The next thing you guys need to look at is your head of youth development. So mine is Romeo Yosak and he has been at my club since 2022, since the start of the game. He's produced all those players that you see at the start of the video. Now... He has got good personality, which is one of the most important things for your head of youth development, and also got good attributes. He's got good judging player potential, good judging player ability, and good working with youngsters. Now, it could be a little bit higher for me, but he's been doing a good job, so I've not wanted to fix something that isn't broke. Now, I could probably get better than this guy, but I don't want to touch it. It's working. So if something's working, just leave it. I'll probably have to change at some point, but like I said... Um, but yeah, the biggest thing you guys need to take into consideration are his attributes and his personality. Now, personality could be better. It's fairly professional. I could get someone who's professional, resolute, spirited, model citizen, all those things, perfectionist. If you guys get try and get one of those five, that is the best ones for you. The reason why your head of youth development's personality matters is because it can rub off on some of your players. So if he's got a perfectionist personality or a model citizen, like I mentioned before, they are more likely to have higher professionalism in your youth players. So if it's a bad personality, like balanced, you're basically rolling the dice and playing Russian roulette with personalities. The better personality on your head of youth, the more chance of the better personalities are the players coming through, which means better to develop, doesn't need to mentor them, and they will get to their potential quicker, faster, and more chance of getting there. The other things to know inside your head of youth development profile are your tactical style and his preferred formation. So if his tactical style like my guy is wing play, you're probably going to see more wingers. If he's got a 4-3-3 DM wide formation, again, I'm going to see wingers. And to be fair, saying that, I have got a lot of wingers. And it's what I wanted because I'm playing a 4-3-3 or versions of a 4-3-3. Um, his second preferred formation is a 4-3-2-1 DM AM narrow. So it's a Christmas tree formation, essentially. And I've got a lot of good central midfielders. So I have got a lot of midfielders and wingers. If you guys are playing with a three at the back, you don't want to be spawning right backs with four, two, three, one. Because a three at the back with no wingers, you don't want wingers, really. You want strikers or centre midfielders. Now, it doesn't mean you can't retrain them or sell them on for a good value, but I would just probably get formations that match yours and then everyone is on the same page. Another thing that has an impact and a lot of people do neglect are your under-19 coaches. Now, I've got one more spot because I'm just taking into a new season. So I will definitely, definitely go and get another coach because the more coaches with better personalities will rub off onto your youth players. For example, these are my under-19 coaches. They have got very good personalities if you look. Spirited, professional, resolute, professional, resolute, spirited, driven, resolute, fairly determined, which is probably the worst one and I might look to replace and resolute. So... These guys have an impact on your players' personalities that come through. For example, Wanda Felipe here has just come through recently. On his favoured personnel, he has Robbie Fowler as a backroom staff member. If I click on Robbie Fowler, he's an under-19s coach with a good personality, which is spirited. And Wanda Felipe has a good personality at Resolute. But if I now go into Ivan Elbato, who is a rename from someone one of my Twitch viewers... He is a fairly determined personality, and this might just be chance and coincidence, but if you look at this guy's favoured personnel, he has no Pamarot in there as a backroom member, and this is the guy that we mentioned earlier with a fairly determined personality that I might look to replace. So it looks like this guy has had an impact on this guy's personality, and it's not a bad personality, but it could be better like Juan de Felipe. So make sure, the point of this is, is make sure that all your coaches in your senior team and your under-19s team throughout the entire club have good personalities. Even take a little bit of a hit on how good they are for better personalities if you're wanting to maximize your youth intakes. A really important piece of information is if you go into your staff section and then you go to responsibilities and advice and reports, if we hover down over this one here, provides youth development information, it pops up with a bit of information. It says it brings through the next generation of young players coming through the ranks at your club. Make sure this is always set to your head of youth development. If you sack a head of youth development and hire a new one, it will default to your assistant manager or your director of football. So make sure when you hire a new one, 
always go in and change this part. It is the guy that brings through the next generation. The next thing on the list are team affiliates. Now, I've chosen Mets here because it's something that I notice a lot. In With Mets, they have uh, an affiliate affiliation to Generation Foot in Senegal. Now, you might see a lot of Senegalese players at Mets, and you might never have known why, but this is why. So if you look at their little agreement they have, it says Generation Foot may send academy players to train at FC Mets to gain experience. FC Mets may benefit with some of these players coming through their youth ranks. Now, in a minute, after I've showed you this one I'm about to show you, I will tell you how to do that inside your boardroom and which option to pick to get the best options. But if we go into Mets' first team and we find Fula Saive, the Senegalese guy, now he's not amazing, so just take, take that away. It doesn't matter how good he is. But the point is, is if I go into his history, it says he's always played for Mets, right? So he's come through the Mets Academy. That's correct. But if I go into his biography and we read it, it says that Saive began his career at Generation Foot in May 2025 he joined Mets in 2029 so actually he came through Generation Foots Academy under the hood where you couldn't see him and then Mets stole him or poached him whatever you want to call it or Mets just invited him over to, to France for like a better standard of football and he came through Mets at 2029 so now I'm going to show you guys how to find affiliates that can bring players through your academy with nations that you might want in some of your intakes so you go to your boardroom and club vision you go to networking and then you go to affiliate club and then this screen will pop up and then what you want is this option here we should seek an affiliation with a club which can provide us a chance to recruit foreign youngsters we click that and he said he said no that's fine right and then now he said we're going to give you what you're asking for. So I've been at the club for a long time. So now they'll let me get involved with it. If you've not been at the club for a long time, the chairman might not trust you. Then he'll give you a list of people, that you, uh, clubs that you can pick from. But I'm going to actually get a chance to get involved with this. So I'm going to click yes. I could have clicked the other option and it would have given me, they would have picked for me a, a bunch of clubs to pick from. But I want to get involved in this and show you guys what you can do. So now we've got this message. Now I can choose a choose club. It's just under my camera, just down there. It says choose club. You'll see it. No problem. Now we click that and it brings this up. So I've got, I can pick all these clubs to be my affiliate teams. So let's, for example, pick Atl Atlanta United. If I pick Atlanta United, I might see some American players come through um, my academy intakes. Now what you can do is you can filter and you can find the countries that you want down the right hand side. No problem. But that is the way to do it. So once you do that and you commit, so let's just pick Atlanta United and choose affiliate club. And then we click confirm. So you just have to continue a couple of days and then it gives you this message that they've confirmed that they have an affiliation contract with Atlanta as, as requested. And the link will be set up immediately. And then it tells you that and it gives you a bit of a background into Atlanta. But if we go into club info and then aff aff affiliates and we go down to Atlanta United, it says here, it says, Atlanta United may send academy players to train at FC Andorra to gain experience. FC Andorra may benefit with some of these players coming through their youth ranks. So it doesn't mean you're going to get an American player every year. It doesn't mean, even mean they're going to be good. But you might get three one year. You might, got, you might get zero for five years. You might get zero for five years and then one the sixth year. But again, these aren't things that are going to guarantee good players. These are things that are going to give you guys a better chance and give you a better save game. And it might even give you more attachment to your save because players that come through the academy are like no other players. You can also negotiate a current affiliate link. If you click on one that you have, so let's say you have six in a row here. If you click the one that you want, you can negotiate your existing affiliation and you can change the wording on this agreement to include players training and coming through your youth intake. The last thing I want to explain on this video is something called game importance and youth rating. Now you guys can't see these things, but they are inside the game under the hood again. And it's things that you can change in the editor once the editor comes out. Um, but I'm going to explain what they are. So game importance and youth rating have a, a direct impact on the country's um, Nugents uh, as a whole throughout all the country, all the clubs inside the country. So game importance, for example, think about England is the most important uh, sport in the country. So game importance is at the highest level. So you get the best uh, best Nugents in that country. Brazil, again, highest importance. USA has um, other sports that they really, really uh, prefer over soccer, as they call it. But um, their youth importance is a bit lower. So you don't see as many good uh, players from USA. But players like Mexico, they really love football and it's their big one. So they have better uh, youth players.
That makes that sense, right? Game importance makes sense. Youth rating, however, is a rating out of 200 that every single country in the game has. You can find it online. I'll put it in the description below if you want so you guys can see which countries have the best youth ratings. Not a problem. I'm not going to put it on the screen because I don't want to spoil it, spoil it for people if they don't want to know. But the higher the rating out of the 200, the more chance of better Nugents coming out of that country. Now, I think it was introduced in two football managers ago that is now dynamic. Um, on this save, for example... We also enabled the editor so we so we could track the uh, the youth rating of Andorra, um, and we actually found out that I did quite well, and it went down by one point, which seemed like it wasn't working as intended, and then it went back up by a point. So we're actually now, <laughs> I mean, technically it is dynamic, but it has only just gone down one and up one, even though I'm qualified for World Cup. So I'm not saying it's working as intended, but that was a cup that was last FM. It might be this FM. I've not tried it. But um, it does go up if you do well in your um, as a national team. And I thought being the national manager might be a better chance of me improving it. And then it might have given me better uh, Nugents at club level. Which, it hasn't worked that way intentionally. But we have got good Nugents anyway. So all the tips uh, before this part of the video will help you. I'm just letting you guys know about the youth rating. So if you guys are thinking that you want to be in a country that's got better Nugents, I will link that down below. And that's going to be everything in the video, guys. Like the video, please. That would be fantastic for me and my channel. Hit a subscription as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.